You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcast on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for March 26th, 2021. It's still not safe for work. Recorded live from the world headquarters of the Cornfield Resistance, where we've racked our brains but can't remember Barack Obama ever calling into the Lawrence O'Donnell show on MSNBC to rant about Donald Trump's press conference. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. ever doing that well there was all his uh, he did a lot of rage tweeting you probably remember that oh yeah a lot of swearing a lot of lying about you know stuff just constant so i can understand why people i honestly i've been waiting for uh the rage tweeting from joe biden because that's what presidents do right that's what if you're young enough if you're presidential that means that you're a white man who screams a lot yeah yeah so it and there is a certain um Give them nothing to attack. Mm-hmm. Give them yeah. nothing. Just right. and and from Jen Psaki all the way down, uh, it's no. Give them nothing. Um, uh, That's clearly a conscious policy. Yeah, on the part of the comms team at the Biden White House. Yeah. to give them nothing. Don't respond. Yes. Don't react. Right. Um, remind them. Actually, I do call on you and always be nice. And, and yep. uh, I call on you frequently. And, I, and by the way, I'll be on Fox News for the third time this Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. you have very nice socks, but we're moving on now. Yeah. And just, you know, treat them as, um, as frankly, the, the entire- whiny ass titty baby yes. children that yes. they are. We, we, we tend to forget <laughs> that. Uh, we tend to forget that um, during the Trump years, people who were actually cared about democracy were begging the White House press corps to stop showing up for these things. Because they were just bear baiting performative exercises and pissing on the press and lying to them and waving. Well, and CNN had to sue to get one of their reporters his White House press right. pass back. So, and and we were yeah. saying, send your interns, send children, send anybody yeah. else, but stop treating this as a serious presidential thing mm-hmm. because the guy behind the podium doesn't. He's using right. it to piss on you and to fundraise, mm-hmm. and and the mm-hmm. and the democracy dies in darkness. People like no. Every day we'll trudge up there and we'll let Sean Spicer take a dump on our head and then Sarah Huckabee will do it. And then the broad who won't even hold a press conference. And we tend to forget that they're, they're just terrible at their job. Mm-hmm. And that mm-hmm. was sort of overshadowed by the horror going on the other side of the podium. But that's what Michelle Goldberg said on Chris Hayes on Thursday night yeah. that I thought was really smart. She said, you know, when we were all part of the resistance together, we kind of forgot that. Really, the White House press is pretty bad at their jobs they're, they're in terms terrible. of holding presidents accountable. That's not something, you know, they're spoiled and they're uh, careerist. And it's all about getting something viral moment and being mm-hmm. a hero among your peers mm-hmm. rather than doing a job of informing the public about what's going on at the White House. That is not something they're good at. Bazinga. And- That's what they're looking for. <laughs> Every every time they <laughs> yeah, open their mouth, it's yeah. like I've got the coolest question about mm-hmm. immigration. Then, I got called on. Yeah, and you know? yeah, yeah. So okay, I have a I have a the twenty third question about immigration. Can I ask it right now? Like well, <laughs> the crisis of, at the border. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, can we talk about the again the, absorbing the right wing narrative yeah. and and exuding it from your skin? Yes. Hey, Drift Glass, I want to say hi to everybody. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? We didn't really mean to start with the former administration. We no, are we sorry. Didn't. That's that. No. Speaking of bad habits, we are. We apologize for that. And I've got a, just a little bit of housekeeping that I need mm-hmm. to do with our listeners because yes. I keep forgetting to do it. We did recently change the opening music, that little 15-second snippet of music mm-hmm. at the beginning of our show. Um, there's a band called The Pineapples. And one of their uh, members c- contacted me and said, have this music. This is a B-side to one of our seven-inch singles, and it's called Orange Sunset, and you can use it in your show if you want. Oh. And so I wanted to uh, let everybody know that music is by The Pineapples, mm-hmm. and you can listen to more of The Pineapples. They are at soundcloud.com slash the hyphen pineapples. 
And I thought that they kind of sounded like uh, cake with a little bit of spies who surf stirred in. Mm -hmm. But uh, this singer from the pineapple said, no, 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 we don't, we don't use, we aren't cake. We don't try to be cake, but uh, we consider ourselves Link Floyd. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) Very funny. So uh, go listen to that Link Floyd inspired sound over at uh, soundcloud.com slash the hyphen pineapples. And I have All a right. little housekeeping too, which is okay. um, I just wanted to continue to thank those of you who are putting my posts on for my little blog, driftclass.blogspot.com mm-hmm. on Twitter. Uh, it's been over two months now, I think, since I was banned for life from Twitter. And uh, just to fill you in, I have filed an appeal every week. Um, you're supposed to file once and, and each time I file, I get an auto reply saying, we'll get back to you soon. And they never do. Mm-hmm. Um, they keep each auto reply says, this seems to be referring to a previous thing. So we'll just drop it on that pile. So they are aware of me. <laughs> yeah. They have a, they yeah. have a, a, you know, they have a felon number and they have my, you know, they have, <laughs> they have my, uh, my mug shot there. So they know who they know who's contacting them. And I don't know if it's just, you know, pound for pound, just let it pile up until it reaches a thousand and they do something about it. But so far I've gotten an auto reply uh, every week. So I'm not giving up on it. I, I think I'm never going to be back on Twitter by uh, mm-hmm. under mm-hmm. drift class. Cause that's just not going to happen. But uh, under Mr. Electrico rather, but um, I have been uh, trying as I following their instructions. And I, I still um, want to thank you all for pointing out that I was banned for literally nothing. Yeah. Or literally yeah. nothing because algorithms and some wing nuts got tired of me. On I think Twitter. there you were on a list before of somebody deciding to report whenever you called somebody a name. Anything. And when yeah. that name was literally the word trash, uh-huh. then that was, Gone. you know, yeah. Gone for life. You reported so, and you had seven strikes against you or something and that yes. was it. So, yes. so, so. The Cuomo brothers are still on Twitter, but not me. So, <laughs> yeah, right. which is which is perfectly worse. But I, but this is mostly just thank you for um, taking my stuff and putting it out on Twitter because that really does like double the amount or triple the amount of traffic that comes to my site. It is out of sight, out of mind, and Twitter well, and was primarily. Know, Ten Grain's been so good about that. By he the has, way, he's he just has. such a great member to have on your team. Yeah, there, there's a there's a, a tiny group of people out there who I will thank personally uh, in the great by and by. Um, but I do appreciate it very much. So, and, uh, and now that's the last moment of unity you will hear from this podcast. Uh, <laughs> well, it, it's, it's ironic. You should say that drift class, because I want to start off our show by talking about, um, an article in the New York review of books this week. It's the uh, March 25th issue. And, uh, it caught my eye because it has a painting of Joe Biden in in the article heading up the article and uh the article is called to hell with unity yeah and uh it's you would really like this article if you read the whole thing drift class i know i've talked with you about it extensively mm-hmm. but uh he really does this is by fintan o'toole you know your fellow irishman fintan. we've talked about it we've mentioned him on the podcast before good we writer. have we've talked about his, his writing before he writes about politics quite well mm-hmm. uh but he really gets it that a couple of things. One is, um, this didn't start with Trump. Uh, if anything, this started with Newt Gingrich and he right. goes through and he says, Newt Gingrich and the Tea Party and the MAGA movements, it's all one thing. Yeah. And then he, and he talks about Mitch McConnell and how Mitch McConnell is just, you know, he's n- not loyal enough to Trump for the Trump people. And he's, he's, absolutely feckless when it comes to trying to balance Trump with non-Trump Republicans. Um, It's interesting. It's not in this article, but it is interesting how Mitch McConnell has been exposed as not the brilliant tactician that everybody thought he was, tactician that everyone thought he was. Well, he doesn't have to be. He can just be, you know. No, he was just there to block everything and push through judges. That's it. And without the filibuster and without the leadership role to, to, block any bill from coming to the floor he has nothing and he's been just telling humongous lies with a blank face this week you know oh the filibuster was never a racial thing right and by the way state governments aren't trying to stop people from voting i don't know where anyone would get that idea right right it's it's flat out you know 
just, I'm just going to stand in front of this microphone and look at you and tell the biggest lie I can think of. Knowing, um, knowing that, that see, I've never understood this because he's standing yeah. in front of a microphone in front of a million flags and a bunch of his stooges. Uh-huh. Talking to who exactly? Exactly. Are, are who there is he talking to? There? Do the reporters have mouths with tongues and lips and they can form questions? Can they shout? Are you, I loved your idea of just hiring someone to mm-hmm. sit in front of that entire crowd and laugh their ass you off. You said the whole green time. shirt guy, yeah, the guy the in Arizona who just sat there and laughed and, and laughed and laughed and just find the loudest. I mean, I'm pretty good at la- laughing very, really loud. Million dollar <laughs> laugh, honey. You got the, one of the best laughs in the but business. They need they need someone who will, uh, who is good at faking that uh-huh. on command to the point of falling over on the floor. Yeah, laughing. And when he says something like that, just start guffawing till they have to drag you out of there. Because that, and because we've seen yeah. him there in front of that bank of of microphones, in front of the, those flags that he clearly mm-hmm. hates because they're not Confederate, in front of a bunch of traitors <laughs> who are his members of his party, talking mm-hmm. to someone, making yeah. statements about things. Like, is there anybody? I I want to see the camera turn around. And who who are you talking to? Are they all bound and gagged? Are you just talking right. to your staff and pretending to be addressing reporters? Because well, and I this, have never. Poor, I, I hate to say Mitch McConnell's poor staff because they choose to be there. Right. But they they play cleanup afterwards. Right. What he really meant was. But I don't and remember. Who cares? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I And now this is you know, maybe just my Swiss cheese memory as, you know, all we quantum leapers know what that means. <laughs> uh, but I don't remember anyone ever asking Mitch McConnell a question. Yeah, I don't remember any. I don't remember a, a phalanx of reporters yelling at him, asking him a bunch of stuff as, as they were begging to do with Joe Biden this week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I don't remember mm-hmm. a press conference. Of where's, any, she, where's his press conference? Yeah. Three hundred and seventy-one days without a press conference. Right? Where are? Yeah, where is? The, and Mitch McConnell is arguably the leader of the Republican Party and has been, you know, off and on for a very long time. And I don't recall him ever being pressed on anything. Right. Well, um, anyway, my point is Fintan O'Toole really gets McConnell as well. Yeah. And so he's talking about to hell with unity and the conflict between Joe Biden wanting to get things done economically for the country. Yes. And the former Senator Joe Biden, <laughs> who really wants the old Joe Biden, who really wants to believe in the basic human decency of every individual. Yes. And he is having to awaken every day to a Republican party that are not decent people. They are acting in bad faith. They are bulldozing black people. They're just not good people. And when you want in your heart to believe that we can, we're all basically good people (laughs) and you're working across the aisle with Republicans who are not that uh, it's hard and you have to stop it. Right. If you want to, if you want to progress, as he says, um, his baggage, Biden's baggage, is an impossible ideal, a desire for bipartisan unity that cannot be fulfilled. He can and must leave it behind him and learn to travel light. Yeah. And so it goes on. But what I wanted to talk with you about is what this says for the Democratic Party. To insist on the crudeness of what the GOP has become is not merely negative proposition. The great opportunity for the new administration is to aim for basic decency, not just as an ethic of conduct, but as a governing idea. Right. Trump made America an indecent proposal, and much of the country accepted and still accepts it. Mm Mm-hmm. Biden must and can make a counter offer of decency, not only in public life, but in the lives of all citizens. Decency is civil and evidence based discourse, but it is also access to health care and right. education. Exactly. It is true exactly. equality under the law, mm-hmm. it is a living wage and an habitable environment. Biden has quite rightly defined climate change as an existential question, but economic insecurity is also experienced as a matter of existence. It shapes the conditions of life for vast numbers of Americans. There is an ecosystem of social decency in which a sufficient income, a right to timely and appropriate health care regardless of income, 
Mm -hmm. access to education from pre-K to college, a safety net for unemployment, ill health, and old age, and the sense of having an equal voice in public decisions are as essential as breathable air and clean water. Mm -hmm. To those who lack these basics are added the millions more who live in dread of losing them. We know from history that democracy cannot survive long in an environment where faith in the ability of the state to build a floor of decency has been eroded. Just as Biden rolls back Trump's sustained assault on the natural world, he has to give ordinary Americans concrete reasons to reclaim that faith for themselves and their families. Yep. And I just loved how uh, O'Toole put together what environmentalism means. Mm -hmm. It's not just air and water. It's an income. It's healthcare. It's education, yeah. et cetera. That that is the environment that all of us live in. And to be an environmentalist means we have to protect that environment for all of us. And I, it really meant a lot to me to re hear that. Well, I think um, Hunter Thompson said something about politics is the art of controlling your environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And by environment, mm -hmm. it means everything. You you have to be able to control what goes on around you in your life and at all levels, in, in your natural life, your economic life, your political life, et cetera. And for lots of people, and you and I have both been there, when you have the floor fall out from underneath you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you suddenly realize there's nothing going to catch you. Right. You don't want to live on handouts. You don't want to live on charity, on pity. You do want something to catch you before you've fallen too far to ever recover. Well, and, and particularly it, when you have paid into an insurance policy, yeah. which is what unemployment is. Exactly. That exactly. You, you, you've you bought insurance for these things. And that's what's not understood. So many red states treat unemployment as a handout, like you say. The right treats it as a handout. It's insurance, like car insurance. When you wreck your car, your insurance covers a loaner or a rental mm -hmm. or a replacement or all of the above mm -hmm. because you need wheels. And when and you have unemployment, it's insurance that you've ta has been taken out of your paycheck well, and, so that you have insurance against job loss. And this week, um, EBT cards went out to every student in Illinois. Yeah, every uh, public school student regardless of income, right. regardless of uh, immigration status, yep. received a uh, a card for food. I mean, it used to be called food stamps. Now it's its card. Um, and it went to every student's household. Regardless of it. Uh, and that's- Regardless, the, regardless, yeah. And the recognition there is that, look, we don't have time to futz around with, with means testing right now. It is simply a matter of, of decency that mm -hmm. every student in this state should eat, should have right. food on the table, We're food for their family. We're going to end childhood hunger. And as I was saying to a colleague at Crooks and Liars, I'm sorry I'm interrupting you, but no, no. I was saying it to a colleague at Crooks and Liars, you know, this is what you get when you have a progressive governor with fuck you money. I've said yes, this before. Absolutely. You know, and I'm going to end childhood hunger in my state. Mm -hmm. Fuck you for thinking, oh, it's all going to Chicago, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is the complaint we get down yeah, here a lot. All the money. <laughs> it's no, not. <laughs> no. But it's it's a it's a recognition that there's there's a floor and we're not going to let anyone fall below it. And there's a lot right. of other problems and a lot of other, other things to fight over. But mm -hmm. for this mm -hmm. thing at this time, we're simply not going to let anyone fall below this level, period. Yep. And, and he and, has um, invited people who feel, oh, you know, I, I didn't qualify for the stimulus and I don't need this food stamp money. Right. Uh, spend it on food and use that money to donate to a food bank. Yeah. We have a, a hundred you know? micro pantries all over the all central Illinois for people mm -hmm. who just need to stop in and grab something, fill right. those up. There, mm -hmm. There's at least two or three really good organizations that we personally know of right. that pack up lunches for people who uh, meals for people and deliver them and go on who shopping get sprees. Out. Right. Right. And, and do that as a matter of, of, of service to the community. Because mm -hmm. they feel that, mm -hmm. that that's something that they sh that should be done, and they take up the mantle of doing it. Spend your money there. Um, there. There's there's no reason that that money can't be used if you feel that I don't really need it. It there's a plenty of good things you can do with it. But the point being, you can choose not to spend it. But if you need it, it's there. Right. And that and is, we're not going to let 
any school child in a public school in the state of Illinois go hungry. Well, and this is something that's the that, standard that you and I talked about yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. And in a larger sense, I can't say if it's true of every Democratic president. That's that would not be true. But many Democratic presidents who have succeeded in a time of crisis mm -hmm. have had to become uh, had to. I, I wrote this back in uh, 2010 about mm -hmm. Barack Obama, when I coined the term that we cannot endure permanently half fox and half free, ahem, ahem, ahem. <laughs> um, I, I wrote in, uh, in a post called Between the Devil and the Deep Blue Left that Barack Obama must do the hardest thing of all. He must exceed his design specifications. He must stop. That's what Fintan O'Toole was saying about Biden. Exactly. And, yeah. and he has, yeah. oh, this is what, oh, oh, frankly, Obama failed to do. He failed to understand that you cannot keep playing it down the middle when there is no middle and when the people mm -hmm. on one side of it keep moving the goalposts and they will never let you win. They will, they're will they out to destroy you. You have to stop doing that. And, and you know, LBJ was a man of the Senate. He had to learn to become president. Mm -hmm. He had to stab mm -hmm. his own mentor in the back <laughs> to mm -hmm. get civil rights mm -hmm. legislation passed. Mm -hmm. And he did it because mm -hmm. that was important. Um, FDR had to become a, a class traitor to save the country and you know, frankly save capitalism. He had to go against his... Um, his group, his wealthy, privileged East Coast group mm -hmm. to save the country during a depression. Mm -hmm. And and Joe Biden is a man of the Senate. He does not. He believes the Senate is a sacred institution and it's it's uh, it's peccadilloes and its traditions are nearly holy. And you have to start being an idolater and start smashing idols. And one of them mm -hmm. is going to have to be the filibuster. Yeah. And he yeah. doesn't. And, and it, it really is a matter of you got to it's, it's this weird thing where you have to overcome the one thing that's defined you to be great during a time of crisis. And we're hoping that Joe Biden can do that. And the people around him can do that. He certainly edges up to it um, when it comes to talking about um, voting rights yesterday at his press yeah, conference. Yeah. It was absolutely clear that he thought, look, this is not negotiable. And, you know, I have a, I have an idea. Put your arm around him, put your arm around um, uh, Joe Manchin, mm -hmm. like, like LBJ put his arm around Everett. Durkin. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and squeeze. To, Eric, <laughs> Eric, you know, we're facing history yeah. here. This is not just some fucking tax bill. This mm -hmm, is history. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. make a deal with uh with Manchin. Say, look, Give him whatever he wants. If you can <laughs> yeah. no, if you can Joe, if you can go get me, I'm a man of the Senate, you're a man of the Senate. If you can go get me 10 Republican votes, I will name this bill after you. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you can't, then you gotta help me bust the filibuster. Yeah. Or you will be the person I will mention as responsible in my state of the union <laughs> singularly responsible for the for stripping the voting rights away from of millions and millions of black yeah. people in this country yeah. that yeah. will be your that will be the top your line legacy. on your obituary that's going to so, be on your wikipedia page right. when you die yeah so yeah but you can be a hero yeah you be a hero yeah. one of two ways talk you know tell me about these reasonable republicans that you keep dreaming of and yeah, bring yeah. over enough of them to bust the filibuster or stand with us and bring and bring it down for civil rights. Don't let them talk civil rights and voting rights to death when they don't even talk. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I don't know that he'll do that, but he's got to do things like that. And so far, mm -hmm. you know, well, you can name the infrastructure bill after Joe sure. Manchin. Yeah, that's well, you know, you know it's the uh, uh, it's, it's the Marshall the rebuild plan. West Virginia bill. You know, it's the Marshall <laughs> plan, not the Truman plan. Yeah, because people yeah, hate yeah. Truman, but they love Marshall. So name yeah. it after the guy you like. But Joe Biden has a lot of um, political capital he can hand out to people who help mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I don't like Joe Manchin. I'm sorry that West Virginia is a shithole state full of inbred idiots. <laughs> that some <laughs> and a some, few great Democrats. Let me tell a, you, there are great some Democrats. really pro people that stay in West Virginia and the Democratic Party who and are fight, not the yeah. Manchinites mm -hmm. are hardcore. They I, totally I know a few of them. Yeah, they are. Yeah, um, and yeah. That's, through some fluke of history, Joe Manchin is a Democrat, and in a state yeah. that Trump went, you know, won overwhelmingly. Yeah, and we're stuck with him. So you know, I I reserve the right to bitch about him constantly, <laughs> and at the same time, understand that he really does have his finger on the trigger. Yeah. Um. But but in a way, so does uh, Pramila Jayapal. Right. Well, everyone does you know? really. You well, know? yeah. But but she's running the uh, House Progressive Caucus uh -huh. with a very good fist. I mean, she's <laughs> really got that caucus yeah. uh, disciplined. 
Uh, and they are not going to vote for shit that the Senate sends back that's no. watered down. I mean, no. they're they're done with that. And it is control. It's interesting because that is controlling um, the Senate, which is not to be expected. But apparently uh, Chuck Schumer is telling people like Manchin, well, you know, uh, Jamila won't go along with that. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry but man. if sorry. we send that back to her, she's not going to they're not going to vote for it. No. And it, you'll be, you know. Remember that the American Rescue Act went back to the House and they passed it yeah. unamended as the yeah. Senate passed it. Mm-hmm. it. They had changes in the Senate passed. They brought it back and the House said, hey, this is pretty good. And there wasn't any delay after that because Chuck Schumer said, you know, the Progressive Caucus is not going to vote for it if you take out fourteen hundred dollars. They're not going to they're just not going to. Um, I want to say one more unkind thing about uh, Mitch McConnell, if you don't mind, Dirk Glass. Oh, um, no, I'm sorry. that you, We'll have to move on. <laughs> yeah, have we hit our limit? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a person who stole a Supreme Court seat needs to keep the words power grab out of his whore mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, this, is, this is a conversation you and I have, you know, 20 times a week. We do. <laughs> which is st- stating things that are clearly true um, and that are nonetheless, you know, th- beyond our control. Beyond our um, control, yeah. But they do need to be said aloud. They do. Well, need and to I, th- I think if if I think you will hear that from your Republican relatives and neighbors. Oh, this Democratic power grab and this Democratic wish list. It's like, what's on your wish list? Uh-huh. What really do you? What's going to make the world a better place in your politics? Well, and there's uh, that's, and this is the part where Joe Manchin is just an idiot. <laughs> there, there's no, there's no one to be found on the right side of the aisle who, who's a decent human being, who will do the right thing, mm-hmm. um, no matter what. There just, mm-hmm. there just aren't. And it, and Joe Manchin can preen and 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 whine about bipartisanship, and this has to be bipartisan. Again, make it his job. Okay, I'm putting you in charge of rounding up Republicans, Joe. Mm-hmm. Bring me mm-hmm. all the decent Republicans, and we'll have a sit down. And and if you know if there's like three things in the bill you don't like, it's it's like I forget where I read this. You give. You, you turn in your manuscript of stuff that you know your editor will hate because when mm-hmm. the editor pisses in it, they like mm-hmm. to taste better and mm-hmm. then it gets published. So, yeah, sure, we'll toss out this or that. We'll compromise. But but that those days are over. Yeah. And there are no there are no one of good faith on the right anymore on any issue ever. Maybe, I, maybe I, infrastructure. I, I, I beg to differ with you on one thing. There mm-hmm. was a vote in the House this week on extending the PPP loan program. Yeah. Oh, yes. And well, a ton of Republicans voted for it. And I sure. got to wonder sure. uh, which restaurateurs in those districts had those congressmen on the That's, phone I, every you know, day. Our, you know? our, our state senator, one of our state senators, we'll say rep, is a former restaurant owner in Springfield. Yeah, yeah, and that's he's right. A, he's a Republican guy, but I'll yeah. bet you that he supports that bill because that right. bill keeps the doors it, it open. keeps foods on the plates yeah. going through the restaurant. Right, right, right. Uh, you want to talk to me about Stone Kettle NRA no, I, article? I, you go yeah. right ahead. You go right ahead. Well, this is just, you know, we had another horrific shooting in Boulder. Mm-hmm. You, know, you guys know, I have a very hard time talking about uh, mass shootings, talking about people dying. Um, I get very emotional about that. Uh, and I, in, in the course of this week, discovered that uh, 53 women a month in the United States are killed by their partners with a gun. Mm-hmm. 53 a month. Um, but in, in contrast to all of the things that, that liberals have been saying all week and that we say every time something like this happens... Uh, it was interesting to hear an opinion from someone who knows a lot about guns from mm-hmm. a personal perspective. Yeah. And this blogger named Stone Kettle, uh, who is, for, from what I understand, a good liberal. Um, yeah, former Marine a, and, and a gun expert and yep. trains people on the, on the safe use of firearms. All, and, none of which are he, incompatible with liberal right. values, by the way. And he wrote this post that he keeps referring to people to a long time ago, which reminds me of someone else, but I can't remember who it is. <laughs> um, yeah. But his his article is about um, getting our society to respect and obey what the NRA has written about how to handle a gun. Yeah. Well, um, He says there's no such thing as an accidental shooting. There is no such thing as an accidental shooting. Follow the NRA guidelines about how to handle a weapon. Never put your finger on the trigger until you are ready to shoot. 
assume every gun every time is loaded uh, and uh, never point it anywhere <laughs> that you don't want a bullet to go. Right. And this is published in at the NRA back when they were, you know, a gun safety organization instead mm-hmm. of a lobbying group for, uh, you know, gun manufacturers. Um, did point out and have training processes of how to handle a gun properly. Mm-hmm. And getting back to, you know, guns are dangerous. Having guns behind you on a shelf while you're talking on a camera is ridiculous. Yes, all of they that is true. They need to be locked up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and we've talked about, you know, the possibility of having insurance on guns and so forth, treating them like cars, treating them like... Um, well, yeah, and every... This, you, you said to me this morning, this these kind of conversations over and over again are exhausting. Well, because there's nobody left making any good faith arguments anywhere on the right, right, right. anywhere at all. The the arguments every time you hear, you know, every every assertion is a confession or, or something like that, which is you get some idiot on the right, some uh, Republican Congress person who shall remain nameless, yapping about hammers, and mm-hmm. now we're going to start regulating hammers. Well, show me the massive outbreak of hammers, and show me how you can kill someone from forty feet away or forty yards away with a hammer. Um, what about cars? And uh, that was jumped on by everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, sure, mm-hmm. let's treat them exactly like cars. Let's license them. And you got to take a test for them. And if you use them wrong, they can take them away from you and they can put you in jail if you use them when you're drunk. Sure, let's do exactly that. Mm-hmm. And it is mm-hmm. that kind of, there's no brain cells left on the right. They just spit shit out. They just, because no one on the right cares whether or not the argument makes any sense. It's just, it's just verbal spackle to keep the wall up between reality and them. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so addressing each one of those as if they were a serious you know, rebuttal argument is insane because they're not intended to be any of those things. They're intended to just be blah, blah, blah that shuts everyone else up or makes it sound like I'm, a being, I'm being a reasonable person. You need to begin with the assumption, as you do with guns, for example, there is no such thing as a good Republican. <laughs> yeah. There are no there are no accidental fuck ups on the right. The cruelty at the border, the the death of three hundred thousand Americans that were unnecessary. All of those were intentional. Those were those were intentional actions, uh, either created by ineptitude or incompetence. But they were all preventable. So there, I, I'm going to go right down the NRA safety list. You treat the GOP like the NRA. There are no such things <laughs> as as an accident on the right. Whatever their policies have done to this country, it was on purpose. And treat them as such. Make them prove otherwise. Make mm-hmm. them prove that they didn't uh, advocate. Kill half a million people. Kill half a million people. Yeah. Make them, that's, that's the argument. Make mm-hmm. them argue. Make, make them explain why it's okay for mass shootings to go on. Why is that okay with you? Why are you okay? With, and that's, that's the part about Mitch McConnell on a microphone. There is no one pushing past uh, Laura Boebert bullshit about cars and hammers and, and insisting that she answer a question intelligently because she can't do it. There's this, right, right. I, I don't know. I, I'm now I'm just repeating myself. And I realize that <laughs> I get very frustrated let's, let's, with this. Let's, uh, let's take a break well, from this because it is, it's exhausting. It's hard to talk about. It's hard for me to talk about. And it's, I mean, I think, I don't think we're talking to anyone who doesn't agree with us on, right. a, on the level of frustration we've reached. Um, We got a letter this week from uh, our friend, friend of the pod, uh, Arliss Bunny, who is our, uh, oh, I'm sorry. (laughs) Did you hear that? I did. (laughs) Excellent. That's great. Um, Yeah, I didn't realize that button was on Zencaster that you could just push it. (laughs) Let me try that again. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) you know, this is about the only time I know of where. The sentence, what does this button do? Did not end in tragedy. So <laughs> we'll, we'll be using that again. A lot. Um, a, a lot. lot. <laughs> I want one. By the way, I want one too. So you I have think this one. Is, you have one at the top Hold of on. your screen. Really? Hold on. Hold on. I don't see any such button. You don't have a button up there next to the clock ticking that says drums? No. No. Oh, I'm, I'm it's the, only me. Yeah. Because oh, I'm the producer. You know what? The patriarchy so is this. Just, yeah, no, I get nothing. Yeah, see? Oh, that's no. nice. That's nice. So when I have a transition, I can 
put all that in there. Okay. You know, my masculinity is really threatened right now. So, <laughs> Arliss Bonnie wrote us, and mm-hmm. she, uh, I had made a comment at this podcast a couple of weeks ago about taxes and how uh, whether we need taxes or not to pay for things, because there's all this, how do you pay for that? Um, and modern monetary theory says, you know, that's just baloney. Uh, but uh, I said we need taxes because income inequality is just wrong. And taxing the rich is a good thing because it tells people that excessive wealth is wrong and we need to reduce income inequality. Well, she had uh, something to say about that. And it's really smart, So as she always is. So um, I'm going to read this to, to all of you. All right. Hello, Blue Gal. Thanks for the modern monetary theory shout out. It's good to hear, and it's happening more and more often. Like you and Drift Glass, the MMT community has been shouting into the wind for a long time. That we are finally at long, long last gaining traction matters and affects everything Democrats want. One quick note. MMT, modern monetary theory, is not opposed to taxes. In fact, they are necessary. They just don't do what people think they do. Taxes never can not do not pay for anything in a fiat currency fiat currency based economy taxes do two important things they create a certain amount of churn in the economy since we all have to work to pay our taxes but much more importantly taxes can and should be used as a tool to mitigate behaviors which are considered either negative to the society or to the economy and i will add i also think positive to the society or the economy as well For instance, if we are genuinely interested in narrowing the gap between the rich and the rest, the federal government should not only spend into the part of the economy where the rest are, but it should close the loopholes and tax the crap out of the 1%. Not because we need their money, but because it is a value to society for them not to have it. The same is true of large corporations. Close loopholes and tax them in accordance with their positive social good. If, for instance, they put their profits into cleaning up wetlands, water, air, and brownfield zones, then good. They get to do that and spend that money in the way that they could put into ads and roll endlessly on Twitter. If they are offshoring American jobs and offshoring money, tax them into the dark ages. There would not be the political will to do what I have just said, but there might be to do something in that same universe. Anyway, just my two carrots, <laughs> because Arliss Bunny always talks about carrots. Yes. Love to you both, Arliss Bunny. And I would add, you know, there is a lot of uh, congressional support for manipulating behavior yeah. of individuals through the tax yeah. code. It, cigarettes. The, uh, retirement savings is a big one. Yeah. Um, Home ownership is another one. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, making sure that your water uh, heater is energy efficient isn't they give you a tax break for that or they Mm -hmm. have in the past well solar powering your house so right exactly so there are all kinds of ways that the tax code can be used to uh encourage socially appropriate behavior whether home ownership is socially appropriate in every situation is another argument for another day but uh yeah so we we should be doing that with corporations as well uh thank you so much for that letter arliss well I, i would like to add one small thing uh-huh. Um, because it just so happens uh, that I wrote uh, David Brooks' post this week. Um, da, da, da. Hold on. Da, should da, I put da. the drums back on? You definitely should put the drums. And, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing because <laughs> I, I think, really don't. I think adding David Brooks to the to the podcast, it took, yeah. took on a whole new dimension. Yeah. It, well, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it did. And it does. And um, I'm not going to go through the entire podcast. Uh, um, genre of David Brooks or my history going back, but I, I, no. I want to make one point <laughs> no, you're because not. there is, there is one sentence in, okay. in his column that I just started laughing at when I read it. It's column today. Mm-hmm. Um, quote, I worry there's a great historical amnesia going on. <laughs> <laughs> you now this is a guy Who's literally oh, his entire career oh, depends no entirely on every one of his colleagues obliging him by forgetting everything he wrote that becomes inconvenient a couple of weeks later. Or did with his marriage. Yeah, everything. Or, or everything. did 
at every with, right facebook <laughs> if this were a sane universe his hand would have struck itself off his body and scuttled away and begun a new career in the gritty reboot of the crawling hand or the beast <laughs> with five fingers because i i can't i can't imagine a, a more clueless and this is a, this is a thing where uh, David Brooks wrote, the column is 10 years ago. I would have been aghast at this leftward shift, but income inequality is real and, and we should do something about that. And that's great. I have, that's fine. But here's the other sentence that made me go, huh, where have I read this before? Because it's about modern monetary policy, uh, modern okay. monetary theory. Uh, but I worry about this new economic philosophy that asserts you can have everything you want without trade-offs, which is not <laughs> at all what... And then I thought, where have I read this before? Where have I? Oh, yeah. Almost exactly 20 years ago. Oh, wow. March 19th, 2001, David Brooks in the Weekly Standard talking about the giant tax cuts that George Bush was proposing. Oh, yeah. And, and the they headline, weren't big enough. <laughs> the headline reads, yes, there is a new economy. Uh -huh. Thanks to once-in-a-lifetime productivity gains, Bush's plans are easily affordable. And it's a whole article about how liberals are idiots and don't understand economics because now the economy is like in this perfect, this perfect perpetual motion state and you can have Social Security fund, funded and Medicare and Medicaid and high tax, uh, uh, tax cuts and more tax cuts and still have a surplus. Right. The idea that we're going right. to blow through the Clinton surplus with tax cuts is insane. What sort of insane a Paul Krugman lunatic economist would believe this liberal claptrap? That was David Brooks. And he was exactly he chided, he chided yes. everyone in the economic world mm -hmm. for not making those goddamn Bush tax cuts bigger. The real They're question too is too small. Yep. The question then is not can we afford them? The real question is why are they so small? Right. Exactly 20 years ago. And David Brooks has had 20 years, starting arbitrarily at that column, of being utterly wrong about everything pretty much twice a week for his entire adult life. And the only reason he still has a job is thanks to amnesia about was, what he wrote in the I past. I was going to say the 2008, 2009 crash of the housing market and, mm -hmm. and, you know, major investment banks going broke. Uh, it would require a total amnesia on the part of mainstream New York City media mm -hmm. to continue to have David Brooks on the staff of the New York well, Times. And hundreds of people <laughs> have been fired from the New York Times, laid yeah. off, no money, uh, were poor, but they certainly keep him on. And yeah. I, I just yeah. I just sat there just scratching my head going, wow, this is it's quite a little world we live in. So uh -huh. it just happened to fit with the MMT discussion we were having. But well, I had a and good I would laugh. say, Driftglass, that if if what you're adding to the podcast about David Brooks is just drop dead hilarious mm -hmm. i'll allow it well you know thank you first of all thank you she controls the drums and the music I and the drums I, there are you should you all should know this a little bit of background about our podcast uh there are literally thousands of hours of me talking about david brooks on the cutting room floor <laughs> on the cutting room in our home floor. It, our basement is full our basement is just full up to the roof with with clips of me going and another thing about david brooks um but i will say that that my wife my mm -hmm. wife coined the expression the the beltway iron rule of david brooks i did i did um which is that it is it is mandatory to quote what david brooks says today it is forbidden to quote what david brooks said yesterday yeah last um, week not that's how not fast, allowed to read it yeah that's how fast his shit rots on the vine and yep. this could not happen he could not exist without an entire ecosystem of collaborators who let him do it because it benefits them because he plays into their narrative so um, He's speaking, got dead hookers in a trunk somewhere. I somewhere. swear. Well, and speaking of writing, I just want yeah. to mention that you know last week we talked about Chekhov, which everyone just. <laughs> I had hundreds of letters going more Chekhov, please. So no, <laughs> no you didn't. No, but this week um, we <laughs> curled up in bed and uh, we studied Ivan Turgenev. Yes, we did, uh, and it was glorious. It was just wonderful. And then I had we took a, a nap because we did. the Ivan Turgenev story went on for quite a bit it went on um, and on and on for a while it was a good story it's a good yeah. story the, the singers um and it is uh, and it's followed um as always by the lesson that comes with uh yeah which uh, we haven't Saunders. quite finished yet no. but but i don't think we got into our podcast last week because we were just having so much fun with this new discovery of mm -hmm. george saunders book um about storytelling and politics because 
you know, we made that connection, but I don't think we got deep enough into it. Mm -hmm. And, and what can be so intentionally mind numbing about politics is you're being told a story, um, by whether it's the Beltway Press or the cable news operation or the New York Times columns or whatever. But so often it's the same story being it's told a, over yeah. and over again. Yeah. Well, that, and that's, that's propaganda. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. it is yeah. the same lie usually pounded yeah. over your head over and over and over again. And well, and, and the New York Times today said something along the lines of Democrats believe that the Georgia uh, law that was passed may suppress the vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the entirety of Twitter was like, Democrats believe? What do you believe? You're the New York Times editorial page. Do you have any opinion? No. Opinion about that? No. <laughs> because then, then you know, then someone will say something mean about us in the, on Fox News, then we'll be in trouble. Yeah. Um, so in today's class in, in political literature, Mm -hmm. um, and this, this goes along with something I was writing this week. Uh, broadly speaking, in American public life at any given time, there are five, kind of five, main overlap, uh, non-overlapping storylines, and four of them are either conservative or conservative enabling. So if you're wondering mm -hmm. why you're so tired, mm -hmm. it's because the other four narratives going on in American public life that by and large drown ours out are either conservative or conservative enabling. And they, they are as follows. There's the centrist story. Um, Tom Edsel had, uh, a couple of days ago in the New York Times, I got a lot of email going, are you going to, are you going to sit still for this? Um, just writing about how I see the left and I see the right, but who's looking at the exhausted center, the poor, <laughs> abused, exhausted center. And I just, look, you know, give me two minutes of the New York Times to write one column and it's just going to be fuck the center, fuck the center, fuck yeah. the center. There is no center. What are you talking about? It's this imaginary middle ground that people uh, largely who work at the New York Times and places like that want to believe exists and that the, the extremes on both ends are blah, blah, blah. Um, or the center is uh, people who think about politics at most every two years right. in November. Right. You know, when it's time to vote, then their but, attention turns to it. But there, and right this, now they're thinking about March Madness. They're not thinking at right. all about And that's politics. fine. Yeah. That, yeah. That's fine. But it's this it's this sense that there's this beleaguered center who's badgered by two equally Oh, equally extremes. Extremes. <laughs> and extremes friend, on both sides, yes. Well, and a friend of the pod, as you know, uh, Jay Rosen, one of, our, one of our guests from several months ago, identified a column by John Crashower this week, National Journal columnist and occasional guest over at the Bulwark podcast, uh, he said this surpassed Chris Saliza and Mark Halperin <laughs> and now and now heads the class. Uh, he shows this to us so we can watch it for the super savvy insider press has to move in this equalizing direction to preserve the game, the imagery. And the subject of the article is both parties are trying to game the election rules to their advantage. Oh, my God. Of course, one of them's trying to get people to vote make it easier for people to vote. The other side is trying to take those rights away from them, either de facto or de jure. And I keep reminding people in the re real world outside the podcast that our Republican congressman's margin of victory went up when more people voted. Yes. I want more people to vote. I want I everyone to have access to the ballots. I want them to be able to vote in less than 30 minutes, regardless well, of what party, if they're going to write in Mickey Mouse, I want them to be able to have access to the ballot. Well, you're never going to get a column in the National no, Journal and you're never going to be on the Bulwark <laughs> podcast because right. no, you're, because it's not. just a game. This is all just a yeah. game. And yeah. one side and the other side, they both think it's to their advantage. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're right. Dem I think democracy is to my advantage. Yeah. Do you yeah. have a problem with that? Um, yep. So that's, that's the centrist media. And that's a, a conservative enabling media because every Republican atrocity becomes both sides did it. Mm -hmm. It enables them in the way that it always, you know, they blame the arsonist in the fire department for the fire. Right. And and it gets people just screw it. A, a curse on, you know, a plague on both your houses. That is conservative uh, enabling. Conservative media is, you know, hate radio and Fox News and Onan and whatever else. And you know who these people are and you know how mm -hmm. bad they are. Mm -hmm. um, then there's the dry drunk Republican media, which is a smaller group. But it's it's the bulwark, and it's Bill Crystal, and it's the, the it's the guys who run the Lincoln Project, mm -hmm. who who really who 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 put down the demon rum of Donald Trump, or got run out of their party, but they still believe that conservatism is a noble ideology. 
Mm-hmm. They still believe in the in the in the horrible ideas and the the left is just terrible, just can't trust him bullshit that created the environment that grew Donald Trump. They still believe in all that. They're just and they're extremely vexed if you bring up the fact that the problem with the Republican Party is full of Republicans. Mm-hmm. They they mm-hmm. can't mm-hmm. square the circle. They can't explain how their party turned into this thing, which they swear it never was before Trump. And so that is a conservative enabling media. Again, this is the you know the people who still believe in conservatism. And now that Trump is gone, we can get back to the good old days of talking about how cancel culture is something the left and the right do. Then you have the Red Rose media, and you know who these people are. Yeah. This is this is Glenn Greenwald. This is Joe Biden is worse than 12 Barack Obamas times six Donald Trumps. Um, these are people who are way, way, way w- horseshoe theory, um, working, might as well be working from Moscow. They're small, but they have a very loud voice. And then there's us. Well, <laughs> so, and, and I, I disagree with you in that I think there are some... Uh, what what you might call red rose media you're talking about you're talking about Glenn Greenwald you're not talking yes. about Bernie Sanders supporters no 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 I'm world. talking about well Bernie Sanders is in there doing Bernie Sanders stuff and right, I, I appreciate right. him doing it no I'm talking right. about the people who for whom um who have changed their red rose to a hammer and sickle on Twitter <laughs> um who who have absolutely uh, hor- who hate the de- DNC is responsible for every evil ever that yeah. happened under and the, the sun and the horseshoe of preferring Russia to Biden right. is really weird because because it is the far right people doing that and yeah. then Glenn Greenwald doing that mm-hmm. and, the, and, and it the, is again, so bizarre it, it would they would not rise to my attention were the not they had a, were it not for the fact they have a huge megaphone right and they right. they appear you know on Fox News and, when Glenn and they Greenwald, have money they have they, they have are money. backed by money. Unlike when, um, big money, unlike this podcast, we're backed by, when, by $5 contributions, but they're backed by billionaires. Right. Well, and right. when Greenwald shows up on Fox News, mm-hmm. um, it's even liberal Glenn Greenwald agrees. <laughs> yeah. So he like, speaks to all of us. <laughs> and so yeah. that is, again, conservative enabling media. It's the, it, it lets them say the corrupt duopoly right. is the problem. Right. And there's really yeah. no point in even voting uh, because – the system is corrupt, man. The whole thing. Everyone's equally awful. There's no point in making any choice whatsoever. Well, Republicans are like, cool. Our people yeah. are going to show up, but yeah. maybe enough of your people will stay home because, hey, Jill Stein or I'll write in, you know, someone else or third party or something just enough to let Donald Trump win. Right. right. So and and if you look, there really are five basic political narratives, four of whom are either distinctly conservative or enable the conservative narratives yeah. and outcome. And there's and then team there's us. evil. Team evil pays really well. That's why they there's do. four to one because they really do. You know, team evil and and you and I, I don't want you say us, but what you mean, there we have a lot of allies. Oh yeah, in no, no. The podcast world in the blogosphere. Uh where it's not it's not the professional left and no one no. else out there is doing good. No, 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 no. Uh lots and lots of, of really great people out there are doing what we're trying to do. But well, it's a, it's a but, big, no, no okay. it's a big raucous, occasionally infighting mm-hmm. bunch of people who broadly are trying to move the country forward, mm-hmm. broadly mm-hmm. believe in the values of the democratic party who broadly believe that rights should be extended as far as possible. And people should have a floor under them and they, the, the environment should be clean and, and we should hand a better planet off to our children than we inherited and on and on and on. And we fight among each other all the time and we have disagreements, but mm-hmm. that uh, the liberal progressive Democrat, what have you, it's a big infighting group of everybody else who wants the country to do better than it's doing now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And as, as Will Rogers described the democratic party and no one's ever done it better. I'm not a member of any organized political party. I'm a Democrat. Right. Right. Well, on topic with all of this, I have a question for you. Sure. About um, Chicks on the Right podcast, (laughs) which is, as I said in Crooks and Liars, it's diamond and silk, but blonde. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm sure they're good mothers and good, you know, to their kids. And I'm not telling, saying that they're... uh, they don't have redeeming qualities as human beings. I'm, I'm not putting them down for that. But I am putting down the fact that they were given a segment on Newsmax as sure. podcaster, you know, just just like us, podcaster. Mm-hmm. 
And one of the chicks on the right blonde said uh, that, you know, a whole bunch of Union soldiers died in the Civil War, and that was atonement for slavery. You know. And so people that have today who have nothing to do with slavery shouldn't have to pay for slavery. You know, reparations are just saying people that aren't responsible at all for, um, you know, police departments killing people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wealth inequality among the races. You never you never uh, took any advantage of that. Um, you know, you know, the Union soldiers died. And as, as you pointed out, and I put it in my post, the clip from Stewie at Family Guy. Yes. Going to Gettysburg, walking up to a black person and saying, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> we we cashed a pretty big check for you guys here at, yeah. here at Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it was that argument, though. It, yeah, was, it was exactly that argument. And what uh, happened? And there's no one that's But, but on the she thing. gets a place on. Now, yes. now, maybe I'm elevating Newsmax to a higher well, position than it actually is. Uh I'm, I wonder about Newsmax and whether we even should be treating that as actual television. But well, I, I treat any—I hate to use the metaphor—any any weapon that's loaded and pointed at everything I love mm -hmm, seriously. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if it's a, if it's a silly little podcast or a silly little uh, blogger, um, if it's someone on Twitter with four followers, I don't take them seriously. Right, right. But if millions of people are watching and listening and believing and and going there for their information, yeah, I take them very seriously. As, as you should take any well poisoner, anyone mm -hmm, who tries mm -hmm, to poison mm -hmm. political dialogue to advance right. fascism, which is what right. they're doing. That's what um, they're doing. Yeah. And that, um, that whole idea, uh, it's something I haven't quite put into words yet. So I don't want to launch into it in any depth today because mm -hmm. I'm still working on the idea. But there's just way too many people who are in the never Trump group and unconservative media who, are, who get wrapped around the axle of, of cancel culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I listen to these, all of these people and I just, I'm kind of amazed by their sort of very narrow focus. They, they dial in on one or two people that had something bad happen to them. It was unjust. And then jump to, you know, the left just does this all the time. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, it's, and it's cancel culture on the left and cancel culture on the right, you know, cause you know, Hey, who was canceled harder than uh, the weekly standard, right? Right, and, right. and when I looked across that, I was like, well, isn't that the free market doing what the free market does? I mean, isn't that what you sort of believe in that if, if an organization doesn't suit the needs of the consumers and the people who want it and they don't, they don't want to do it anymore, they just leave and mm -hmm. you fall apart. I mean, isn't that sort of how it works? And the one thing I haven't heard anyone, but like people like Tom Hartman talk about, mm -hmm. but not even in this term is there is a cancel culture, but mm -hmm. it's so big. You don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. Because it's like living inside of the event horizon of a black hole. You don't even notice you're in there. And that is how many liberal radio stations are there? Right. And right. and how many conservative radio stations are there? And it's it's wall to wall, drive from one end of this country to another. And you can find two radio stations doing, doing Rush Limbaugh shit or doing Sean Hannity shit in pretty much every town you go to. Mm -hmm. But you have to drive right up to the border of Chicago and hold up your radio if you want mm -hmm. to catch any liberal talk anywhere that isn't on Sirius XM. It's on terrestrial radio. And it made all the difference in the world. In 1994, Republicans are very clear that Republican hate radio was their margin of victory in taking that, over the House. That was the majority maker, right? And it's not right. because of audience preference. It's mm -hmm. because corporations owned by conservatives do not want to put liberal voices on the air. Well, Dirk so Class, let me play let me play devil's advocate with you for a sure. moment, though, because you and I, I noticed and I showed you a commercial mm -hmm. uh, for a laundry detergent. Yes. Where a married lesbian couple has two, both white women have two adopted black children getting dirty out in the backyard. Yes. And they're folding laundry and talking about how hard it is to keep kids clean. Ha ha ha. Mm -hmm. Very typical ad, except for the participants in the ad. You could have written it for a white straight couple with white kids in the 50s. And, and it were. would have been, yeah, it would have played. It's the same commercial, right? It's the exact same commercial, yeah. right? Um, and you mentioned the other night we when, we when we did our little, okay, let's see what's on Fox. Yeah. And we switched over to Fox and what was there but an ad for 
get your birth control by mail. Yeah. And so when you talk about something that is so big you can't see it, I mean, this is something Biden has actually mentioned very specifically. Look at the ads. Right. And look at how, uh, you know, integrated equality is because big business gets it, that you have Mm -hmm. representation matters. And we have to market our product, our laundry soap, to every family and show sure. that every family is welcome to buy our laundry detergent mm-hmm. because money is green. <laughs> money is money. That's what and, the, and the American family has changed. It has. Uh, tremendously over the past 50 years. So so what's um, the devil's advocacy portion of this? The, the, well, just the idea of if you are a um, white conservative in West Virginia – who had a union job in the 70s, your Archie Bunker. Right. To to that person, and I know we don't respect their opinion, but to that person, there has been a cancel culture of white supremacy. Uh So big that you and I don't see it. Let me me ask you a different question. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoy these kind of conversations. I know you do. Um, <laughs> did It's why he married me, folks. <laughs> uh, it's one of the many, many reasons I married you. Um, we, we won't talk about the others. Um, <laughs> did, let's say Tide, for example. Yeah. Yeah, right. we, we have a jug of it in the basement, and I, I use it to, I'm sure that's a terrible thing for me to admit. I don't know. But um, did Tide stop making commercials that have um, straight white couples in them? I don't know. I don't think I haven't paid attention to. I will tell you the the one most abused minority in all commercials is Dumb Dumb Dad. (laughs) Um, Dads and idiot commercials. Dads always We we point those out always as well. Dads and idiot. Because doesn't matter the race. Dad's an idiot. (laughs) Doesn't matter race. Doesn't matter age. Dad's always stupid. Dad is always an idiot. Yes. And and sometimes adorably so, lovably so. He tries so hard. Watch TV one night if you watch commercial television Mm -hmm. and just notice and you drip class will be sitting on the sofa because we're watching forged in fire or right. we're watching resident alien both of which have yes. commercials on them yes yes and drift class will there be a commercial on drift class just goes dad's an idiot dad's <laughs> and he idiot. feels I'm so dead. oppressed we have to I say do. oh poor drift class I, I actually i feel seen because i'm i'm you that feel guy. seen i do i really really do <laughs> but no the, the 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 there are commercials that are being made, and this is sort of a, a very small example of a very large mm-hmm. phenomenon, but mm-hmm. there people, white people have not disappeared from commercials. Right. Um, well, and and I'm sure the dads and idiot commercials ran in the golden oh, yeah. age of the 1950s oh, of for white people. You know? <laughs> well, once once you figure out who's who's spending the money in the household right. and who it's safe to sort of make fun of. It's Mom safe is, to make fun of dad because dad sure. has all the power. <laughs> well, and and mom's, mom's making buying the, the groceries, decision. right? Exactly. Mom's buying exactly. the groceries. She's the one the picking out the laundry detergent. Yeah. Mom, yeah. And mom is wise enough not to listen to dad's stupid suggestions. Mm-hmm. And the kids are always smarter than everybody. Right. Um, and that's, I, that's fine. That's every sitcom. It's, it's a whole bunch yeah. of cultural things. Right. But right. the point, my point being that the existence of the lesbian couple with the, um, with the, racially different children mm-hmm. did not negate the existence of everybody else. Right. It's simp- they're all there now. But they're that's all, they- not what Fox News is telling people. Of course not. No, no, yeah. no. That's See, there's the difference. Yeah. You're talking about the lies that people believe when they mm-hmm. suckle on the Murdoch teat. Right. I'm saying that there is an actual physical cancellation by radio stations mm-hmm. of one side of this discussion has been for 30 years. Mm-hmm. And it's been deliberate and it's been effective. And, you know, the minute the fairness doctrine went away... Uh, conservative media sprang up and grew like mushrooms. Right. And right. liberal, there was no liberal equivalent. Mm-hmm. And you couldn't beg, borrow, or steal a liberal voice on the air. Right. Uh, the the yeah. liberal blogger, you know this blue gal, the liberal blogger arose precisely because. In, no one was form, telling the truth about no, the Iraq war. Yes. No one was talking about the Iraq war or the Bush administration or any of the things that interest us. We were completely canceled from conservative media, certainly. Right. And, and the mainstream media, and we couldn't get in. Mm-hmm. No one would right. put. This is this is the Phil Donahue problem. Yeah, we're going to fire Phil Donahue because he's too liberal. Mm-hmm. And when it turned out we were right, 
Did we get a bunch of radio stations? No. no. Did we get our own television? No. Yeah. Did we get our own book contracts? No. Did we get a We're billionaire st- investing in our voices no. to come out there? No. No. Did we get yeah. did we get the 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 liberal bulwark podcast, you know, the <laughs> people just throwing money at us because you you were right all along. No, absolutely not. So I, I'm saying that the liberal representation in the media, liberal mm-hmm. access to the same level level, uh, excuse me, levers of communication, has been denied to us in such an overwhelming way mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. so long mm-hmm. that we just sort of got used to it. Yeah. But we've yeah. been canceled. The liberal voices, and and this this goes for you know African American voices. This goes yeah. for LGBT voices. This goes. Yeah. I'm not singling us out, but no. there are lots no, right. of people out here who simply never got access, right? And had to right. scream and yell, and then were told, "Well, you're being strident, so we can't have you on the air, <laughs> and you can't yeah. say things like that until Rick Wilson comes along and says them, and then we can put Rick Wilson on the air, but not a liberal." Uh, isn't that interesting? Because uh, Rick Wilson just stole your your jam and Chapter because inverse. he's a Republican, he gets to be, he gets to be on MSNBC. I don't yeah. want to be him, but I, I no. wanna, this is an example to me of there is a cancel culture canceling the liberal voice that is so effective and so broad based. This is why both sides do what exists as a, as a, as a template for the mainstream mm-hmm. media, because yeah. you can't mm-hmm. admit liberals are right. It's just, a, it is a strike you dead sin to mm-hmm. say the left mm-hmm. was right all along. Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. a cancel. That is a culture of cancellation that is right across every television radio newspapers across the board we can't let just let liberals be liberals and we can't let them govern like liberals and we can't let their voices just be heard on an equal basis because they're yeah. right all the time and that'll make all of our conservative people unhappy because it'll make I just, them look stupid I, the, the the only thing that that consoles me about this is that and and this is just to quote Stephen Colbert from years ago, reality has a well-known liberal bias. It does. And so as Arliss Bunny has noticed, you know, eventually things just happen where, oh, the liberals were right. And whether that is appreciated or acknowledged, the activity of our politics catches up, um, particularly when Republicans continue to be uh, acting in bad faith and uh, evil people. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a lot of people are waking up to, oh, Jim Crow isn't dead. Really? Mm-hmm. We're mm-hmm. going to have to go and get dragged to jail in 2022 in order to give people water for while they're waiting in line to vote. I'm and, and the number of people in social media, both on Instagram and on Twitter today, saying I'm getting ready to go to jail. Yeah, I'm going to go and I'm going to get a ticket or a misdemeanor for handing out water. Yeah, in a voting line. I'm going to. There was someone it. today saying, "I'm I'm going to cater every voter I can." Uh, in yeah, Georgia, I'm bringing I'm on. bringing a truckload of water bottles to the voting yeah. lines, yeah. and and take me in, um, because because that civil disobedience is necessary again. Mm-hmm. Um, go ahead. So I was just going to say, let's let's sort of end this portion where we began, which is the fact that some people lost sight of how bad the mainstream press is, and yeah. Yeah. I'm going to quote from Jennifer Rubin's column. Oh my God! In the Washington Post. Um, do you want it? Do you want me to do a drum? Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's pro- that's probably should follow, but you know, I, I'm, I'm new to this whole podcast thing. <laughs> I'm not used to sound effects. I'm, I know this is a whole it's world something for me. else. Really, this is a whole new world for me. I have to, <laughs> I have to start thinking on this a lot. Um, so here's Jennifer Rubin. Hold on a minute. Republican. I'm going to put on ballpark. Better. That's, there you that's go. So much better. <clears throat> this is at the end of a long article about uh, uh, Joe Biden's press conference. The media did not distinguish themselves by asking about immigration multiple times and echoing the false narrative that Biden had created a, quote, surge, unquote. They showed they were more interested in sound bites than in actual news. Their failure to ask about the pandemic, the recession, anti-Asian violence, climate change, or even infrastructure, Biden had to bring it up himself, was nothing short of irresponsible. They pleaded for a news conference and then showed themselves to be unserious. They never laid a glove on Biden. They did, however, make the case for why these events are an utter waste of a president's time. Mm-hmm. Period. Mm-hmm. This, this is the, this is the problem. the The biggest platform in mainstream media is being run by unserious people who don't mm-hmm. give a shit about any of the, who only care about clicks and traffic and controversy. And there's mm-hmm. no way for the reporting on what's going on in the country to be done accurately and fairly 
and and the concerns of actual people to be represented accurately or fairly as long as these people are in charge of the largest media platform there is. Mm-hmm. And, and, and there's there's a whole uh, lot of discussion to have about how to fix that that we aren't going to get to today. No, no. But I can see the reporters in that room arguing that if we don't do this, we will not survive. Yeah. And being a part of a blog that you know, lives on clicks and we do at Kirks and Liars, yes, we do, we do. Yeah. you know, um, I want to inform people. I want to call out Republicans whenever possible. We are an opinion blog. There's no doubt yeah. about it. Uh, but if traffic is low, I hear about it. You know, I hear about it and we have to do something about it because traffic mm-hmm. can't be low. That's just, we won't exist if traffic is low. So yep. um, it it's something that, has to be fixed in a larger way about our what we value and how we deliver the news. And well, just put Allison Hanschel, you know, if he's yes. in charge of it, <laughs> just do what she says, people. Just do yeah. what she says and, and you'll fix this. Start fixing yeah. the media. Yeah. But it is yeah. clear that democracy is not being served by the tools that um, corporate media has control of. In yep. fact, it's being poisoned yep. by it. Yep. And yep. once again, yep. one of the ways you know that is how rare almost almost impossible it is to hear from the people who've been right all along yeah yeah um and that's just insane it Um, is and let's end on that and start a news roundup shall we absolutely um the bidening as you know blue gal continued this week biden with the uh you want to do a drum roll for biden i think a drum a drum i got a drum it's just it's the bum bump it's not a drum roll i wish i had one of those but anyway Coming next week on the Professional Love Podcast, <laughs> just an hour of drum rolls, just about spilling. Hey, look, what does this do? What does this do? Um, all right. The Biden administration expects to distribute 200 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine in the first 100 days, doubling its original goal that was surpassed last week. The White House will direct $10 billion with a B to expand coronavirus vaccine access for low-income, rural, and minority communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same White House, the Biden White House, is considering a $3 trillion infrastructure and jobs package as part of Biden's Build Back Better agenda. And and some progressives in the House are saying that's not big enough. Well, OK, uh, that's what they're there for. Fight, fight that. Yeah, fight that fight. Biden called on Congress to immediately pass legislation that would close loopholes in gun background checks and ban the purchase of assault weapons a day after the mass shooting at a grocery store in Boulder, Colorado, which left 10 dead. Yeah. I'm, and I'm very familiar with that grocery store. Um, yes, you've been there. That's yeah, right. That's, that's right. I, in Boulder. That's, that's right. My grandmother and uh, uh, grandfather and aunt used, uh, lived in Boulder when they were alive. And I've, I know that town very well. And that was the, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a coincidence. But that was the the, the store I went to to get t-shirts for um, my girls because they yeah. wore Colorado t-shirts last time I visited, which was just a couple of years ago. Um the Senate confirmed Dr. Rachel Levine as Assistant Secretary for Health in the Department of Health and Human Services, the first openly trans uh, sorry, the first openly transgender federal official to be confirmed by the Senate. Kamala Harris will take over efforts to address the immigration problems in at the US Mexico border. She will be in charge of the task force. It is not her entire job to fix no. the border. <laughs> no. But she's taking no. the same role that Joe Biden took. In terms right. of immigration, right, in the uh, Obama administration, right. He's treating her like a vice president, right. like a, a, a real partner. Um, the Biden administration secured hotel rooms to hold around 1,200 migrant families who crossed the U.S.-Mexico border. The $86 million contract is for six months near border areas, including Arizona and Texas. Not one Trump golf course was subcontracted to, not one Trump property. Uh, this is not and a That would money make grab. all the difference. Yeah. You know, if it was a Trump hotel, then sure. you might you might be OK with it. Mm-hmm. Governor Kemp of Georgia signed a new elections bill into law, uh, a nearly 100 page election bill Thursday evening after state lawmakers in the House and Senate voted to pass a, the bill very quickly earlier in the day. Yeah. The law will make several changes to voting regulations in the state, including requiring photo ID for mail in ballots reducing early voting for runoff elections and banning the distribution of food and drinks to people waiting in line to vote. That's just that, that it's all awful. But the last one is like dance marathon evil. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. know, it, it, they shoot horses. Don't they evil? Right. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Now I will say in Illinois, 
if you use your driver's license to register to vote, Mm -hmm. you can register to vote online. And that is simply, you know, that is actually expanding (laughs) the ability to vote rather than contracting it. But they've got to have a way of knowing who you are. And so the Secretary of State takes your driver's license number to know who you are and what your accurate address is and so forth. That's a different thing than saying uh, if you want to mail in your ballots, you have to have photo ID. Yeah, because right now it's a signature match, which is, right. you know, and, and photo IDs one. cost money. Right. So, yeah, it's a it's a poll tax. All and right. All of this is ta- is happening in the shadow of the cleanest election in history where, where there two was... Democrats were elected, you know, a black person and a Jewish millennial were elected to the U S Senate from the state of Georgia. And, and there was no fraud. There was, there was no, no fraud. There was no, everyone, yeah. <laughs> everyone certified everyone, you know, uh, counted the votes twice and three times they certified it. They recertified it. And now it's, well, we got to put these laws in because of all the fraud. Well, and why do you think that? Well, a lot of people think that, well, they think that because you've been lying to them for, mm-hmm. for months and months and months. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. why they think that maybe stupid people shouldn't have access to lawmakers. Maybe stupid <laughs> people shouldn't have access. Maybe there should be some guidelines about how stupid people should be regulated. I agree with John Kennedy, the senator, and yeah. when he said one thing, we need idiot control. I don't think he meant it the way I mean it, but I mean it that way. <laughs> now, to understand this next story, you need to know that Ken Paxton is the Texas Attorney General. And the Attorney General of Texas's office is responsible for, among other things, enforcing the Texas Public Information Act, which is the state's open records law, which guarantees the public has a right to government records. Now, guess where Ken Paxton was on January 6th for Wingnut Altamont? He was right there. He was right there with the mob. And surprise, Ken Paxton's office, the Attorney General of Texas, is refusing to release text and email messages with Ken Paxton, whether he sent them or not, receive them or not, while the insurrection. He also will not tell the state legislature who paid for his trip to D.C. and who paid for his deputy's trip to D.C. because they both went. He should be in jail. He should be in jail. And, you know, he's also uh, been indicted for securities fraud. So uh, quite quite a ticket there, Ken Paxton. Yeah. Postmaster General and Trump time bomb. I love that. That's very good. Mm -hmm. Time bomb Louis DeJoy. His 10-year strategic plan for the U.S. Postal Service includes higher postage rates, slower services, and reduced post office hours. Uh, Nancy Pelosi this week said, not so fast, Louie. It's actually the House of Representatives that funds the activities of the Postal Service, and we're going to fund first-class mail getting there on time. Yeah, he would have gotten away with it, except for you meddling House House Democrats. Yeah, really. Um, A Colorado judge blocked Boulder's ban on assault. Weapons. Four days later, the gunman who murdered 10 people in a Boulder grocery store bought the AR-15 rifle he used in his killing spree. Joe Manchin said he had legitimate concerns over some of the provisions in the For the People Act, the most significant federal election and voting rights expansion in a generation. Manchin urged Democrats to take a bipartisan approach, saying pushing through legislation of this magnitude on a partisan basis may garner short-term benefits but will inevitably only exacerbate the distrust that millions of Americans harbor against the U.S. government. Now, this this is my favorite story this week. This is my favorite story this week, too. You've all heard it already, but I just it just makes me smile. Uh, Lawyers for pro-Trump attorney Sidney Powell, you know, your lover, uh, claim that, quote, no reasonable person would believe that her false conspiracies about widespread election fraud were statements of fact. I, the the Fox News defense. I just and I, uh, such... in other in related news uh, this morning, Dominion sued Fox News. Yes, for one point six. Get billion. it one six. Yeah, billion dollars. Billion dollars. And and when your defense is, our audience are very stupid, and that's not our fault, um, which is effectively what they're saying. Yeah. Uh, I I just I don't I don't know where to go after that. Well, they need you, they need to lose lose cable need to be taken away from them at that point because they're not well, a news network. I, I I forgot who said this um, on the Twitter the other day, but they're looking forward to who's going to have the nine o'clock news at, at uh, Dominion News Network. Yeah, Dominion so, News. There you yeah. go. There mm-hmm. you go. 
The Justice Department said evidence from the January 6th attack on the Capitol supports charges of seditious conspiracy against some defendants. And according to new evidence filed by the Justice Department, Kelly Meggs, the Florida leader of the Oath Keepers, said in private messages on Facebook, Facebook, that he coordinated with the Proud Boys leadership, saying, quote, I organized an alliance between Oath Keepers, Florida Three Percenters, and Proud Boys. We have decided to work together and shut this shit down, unquote. A week later, Meg sent a private message that said, quote, Trump staying in. He's going to use the emergency broadcasting system on cell phones to broadcast to the American people. Then he will claim the Insurrection Act. Then wait for the 6th when we are all in D.C. to insurrection. Wow. Yep. Another 684,000 people filed for initial unemployment claims last week. But that is the lowest since mid-March of last year. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's still at historically high levels. And finally, uh, the U.S. could have limited corona deaths to under 300,000 had it adopted widespread mask, social distancing, and testing protocols while awaiting a vaccine, according to a new research paper. UCLA economics professor Andrew Atkinson projected that the final U.S. death toll would be close to 670,000, and that without a vaccine, that number would have been close to 1.27 million. And people want to give Trump credit for that. Um, if that doesn't and, sober you up, I don't know what will. I don't know. I don't know. Our governor and mayor both got their shots this week. Mm-hmm. And each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Sunshine. Sunshine looks like a cousin to our own Olive. He's a beautiful, trim, black cat. Sunshine believes that chicken-flavored freshly poured cat food is the best invention ever. And, of course, freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor, comes in every flavor pet food can come in. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your pets will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Sunshine at our Facebook page or website. Sunshine is sitting in the sunshine, so it's totally appropriate. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go, Postal Unions! Letter on the air, unless you say otherwise, we will be having a letter show on Memorial Day weekend. Yes, we will. Hashtag save the post office. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. Gourmet coffee, so good. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal, postal address, Patreon, all of it is there at proleftpod.com. I'd like to shout out one more thing Yeah, to Kevin, who ain't here yet, but by the time you all are listening to this, he will be. And I will be a great uncle. Yeah, He'll be a great uncle because baby Kevin will be born. This yes. weekend. Yes, indeed. And my We're wife so is so excited. Is, my wife has already knit up a storm and is doing more. And it's just it's just a just a wonderful day. It's a happy, happy time for day. our family. And we're very excited to meet Kevin. And my my brother and sister in law have driven across the country in under three hours, I believe. <laughs> it seems like that. Um, and uh <laughs> and uh, all is well. We're just waiting on the uh, the news to arrive and uh that Kevin is here. Yep. Kevin is it's here. Very, and, very uh, exciting. It's very yeah. exciting. And yeah. just good news. A little bit of good we news. Just for... wish, we just wish all of that whole side of the family much, much joy and a safe delivery. And we can't yes. wait to meet Kevin. Yeah. Please share our show on social media. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties slept right through Joe Biden's press conference, which is just as it should be. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.